Kelly Dellis. And I'm Karen Lacey, and this is Muse Stories, where we uncover the unusual histories hidden around us. Today, we're actually going to kick off with our wedding series. And it's not really wedding only specific, but um, we were kind of talking about a lot of different things that um, are involved in a wedding. So something old, something borrowed, something new, just for the wedding ceremony, ceremony alone. But also, what about the rings? What about courting rituals? Um, what about the dowry, the, the hope chest? Very important. Um, so we, we kind of thought, wouldn't it be fun to really kind of talk about a lot of these different objects that go into the rituals and the ceremonies um, that go into basically marriage and mm -hmm. making a life together? Um, today, we're starting with courting um, because that's courting. a natural way of yeah. starting with getting married is courting. Courting. Courtship. For us single ladies, all single ladies, so we're courted pretty much every time we uh, go on dates, right? That's courting. I'm not single. <laughs> but I was. <laughs> I was one. Do you yeah. remember what it's like to have a man court you? Yes, I do. I can remember some really, really bad courting. Um, I can also remember some really good courting. Actually, one of the worst dates that I ever had, looking back, it was definitely a courting moment. Mm -hmm. And it was some kind of a test that this guy was having with me. And he failed my test. Um, but his test was like way more overt than mine. Mine was just like, let's go on a date, see how we do kind of thing. And I remember during the date, he asked me if I wore lipstick. And I said, yes, I do occasionally wear lipstick. Okay. And we were having dinner, so I guess my lipstick came off. I don't know. And he asked me to put lipstick on. So he, asked, see, wait, he asked you to put the lipstick back on. Yeah, he wanted to see what it looked like. Great. And I was like, <laughs> no. you. It, That's kind of weird. Right? Yeah. Right? And then he asked me, the, I knew it was going downhill at that point. I'm like, okay, well, maybe maybe I'm just being weird. Maybe he just wants to see what color I'm wearing. I don't know. Maybe I was washed out in the light. And then he asked me about children and if I wanted any. And I said, yes, someday I'd like to have children. And then he said, what is your style of disciplining your children? Oh, my God. First date. First date. First date. And I... Guys, pay attention if no. there are any single men listening to this right now. This is what you shouldn't do on a date. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was I was a little bit like, okay, I'm gonna go home now. Yeah. And it wasn't like he was being like creepy or weird. It was just like we are getting to know each other and you're trying to get to know me superficially mm -hmm. through the makeup that I wear. Mm -hmm. And you're also getting to know me by how I'm going to discipline my children. Mm-hmm. It's a little strange. A little strange. It's a little strange. But, you know, uh, yeah. You know, I think that most women have at least one or two interesting stories about um, dating or courting, that, that uh, rituals that they go through with these guys, mm -hmm. um, especially with the advent of online dating and all of this other crazy stuff that we have to go through to meet people now. And it seems like the old-fashioned ways of doing things is um, – you know, really not there anymore. And that's a shame because there are some really interesting rituals of courtship that I know yes. I would like to be brought back. <laughs> Maybe Me as well. Me as well. I mean, there are, um, well, like my cup, for example. See, this, By the way, this cup is my new favorite thing ever. So it's a Henry VIII. There he is. Henry VIII mug. And when I pour... All of his wives are around there, and when I pour hot liquid into it, all their heads come off, and they're and it's just their <laughs> names, and it tells me if they've been beheaded or divorced or whatever. And then when it's cold again, their faces, like the paintings, are are back on. That's messed up. But you but, had. But speaking of courting, right. I mean, he's the king of how to not court people, <laughs> <laughs> or how to court people because he did yeah. get eight wives. That's true. 
he did yeah. get eight wives. But I, I would bet that it was probably because he was the king of England that might have had something to do with that. But no, speaking of, of courting in general, he actually, each one of his wives, he courted very differently. Um, and it's really interesting to kind of see that. So if you start with his first wife, you know, interestingly enough, that was really right. something that was arranged for him um, by his father. Um, <laughs> she was actually, for a very short time, married to his older brother. Mm -hmm. And so she actually came over from Spain, Catherine of Aragon, mm -hmm. and it was a contract. They never met each other. They, she came over. They got married. He then died. Um, and... Then it was like, well, what do I do now? Do I go back to Spain? And then there was this idea of, well, maybe she'll marry Henry. So she kind of became this pawn, this political pawn of, like, what, it, you know, she should stay, should she go? Um, so she ended up staying for a few years because she was promised that she was going to be marrying Henry. Um, there was also this part about, like, money, dowry. Like, she was actually came with a lot of money from Spain. And if she stayed, the money would stay in England if she left would the king of England have to give that money back? So when the brother died, she basically set herself on a path of saying, you know what, I did not have relations with him, even though, yes, we were married, we did share a wedding night. We didn't actually share a wedding night um, because they were very young. Um, and I'm not sure if he kind of started being a little sickly at that point or not. I think they shared. I think she was lying. She might have. I mean, what do you do? Because yeah, she I could, would lie. Well, she could say, okay, I didn't, and then potentially marry the future king of England, which was going to be Henry at this point. Or she could say, nope, we had sexy times, and then what happens? She gets sent back to Spain. <laughs> sexy times. Yeah. <laughs> at that point, she's no longer a virgin. So yeah. And she also didn't get pregnant from that sexy time. So that could also kind of influence, well, she didn't produce an heir at that moment. So mm -hmm. therefore, mm -hmm. she might not be able to produce heirs in the future. What did Henry VIII say? What was he thinking about all this stuff? Like, From my understanding, and I, I've done a little bit of, of research. A lot of it was historical fiction. Um, but from my understanding, in doing a little bit of the research in, just in terms of himself, he actually really loved her. Um and wanted to marry her, but he had to wait until he was of age because he was much younger than her. Um, she married her, his brother when she was a teenager, but he was much, much younger. Mm -hmm. So they waited until he was more of age, and then they even waited even longer. His father actually, like, you know, really stretched out that. So he was actually marriage eligible for a few years before they actually like allowed it to happen. But but anyway, so that's what he did with, with Catherine. Later on, he decided to bring that back up and say, nope, our marriage was doomed. We haven't produced any male heirs. We have a daughter. We haven't had any um, other viable offspring. Well, wait, let me interrupt right there because I think that this might be the spot where he starts courting Anne Boleyn. Yes. This is his way of courting Anne Boleyn, was to disgrace his current wife. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Why not? Sure. I guess. Um, instead of just having an affair like he had done in the past and that other monarchs are done, um, he ended up basically saying, nope, you, our marriage was always going to be doomed because um, she actually had had relations with my brother, and I cannot covet my brother's wife, tried to bring religion into it, and she was a ardent Catholic, and the Pope, for the most part, backed her, mm -hmm. and um, basically Henry was like, well, fine. So eventually it ended up becoming a creation of a new religion so that he could get divorced and marry Anne Boleyn. There was a lot more involved in that, that yeah. but that was really the the tipping point into that. Um, then he ends up beheading her, you know, because he was ready to move on to the next one. Yeah. And I'm going to skip all the different wives because each one has a different oh. reason for ending. But I, I will talk about an interesting courting ritual that he had with uh, this one over here. Yeah, you guys can't see this. But Anne of Cleves. So she was okay. actually in a completely different country. And um, word was spreading, oh, he wants another wife. Um, what do we do? And so people were actually sending paintings 
um, to Henry VIII, and he was supposed to pick the painting of the female. And I think there was actually a little bit more involved with that in terms of other people telling mm -hmm. him strategically who would be the best person to, to marry, who would bring in money or land or connections. And Anne of Cleves was someone who was chosen, I think for many ways was because um, she was from a neutral country in many ways, but also she did have a little bit of money that came with her. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think her brother wanted to get rid of her for some reason. Um, so she comes in and there is this moment where he's actually dressed up with this mask and she doesn't know who he is. And supposedly this is what happened. This might not be true, but she didn't recognize him. He was like, Oh, get away from me. Oh, you're, you're not very pretty. You're ugly, <laughs> whatever. And he didn't like that because he liked being, he wanted someone to be like, Oh, you're so super handsome or whatever. She didn't realize it was him and rebuffed him. And so then he's like, I don't like her. Um, they ended up getting married anyway. And then he put forward divorce, um, with her instead of beheading, because he said that he just wasn't attracted with her and he could not consummate their marriage. That's so sad. So actually, it's kind of good because... Ego. Yeah, but it's good, though, because he didn't behead her. Yeah, that is good. She got to, le to live, and she stayed in England. She had um, a little bit of money coming to her. Um, you know, she had an allowance. And um, they actually became friends. Um, he kept in touch with her, and um, she got to know his kids. Um that he'd had one with Catherine of Aragon and then the other with Anne Boleyn. And then the third one when, um, after Catherine he, Howard, yeah, the, um, the short lived King Edward, um, his son. Um, yeah. So she kind of was part of his life, but in a different way, almost like this, like a sisterly figure. Yeah. Um, sister aunt kind of, kind of figure. So it actually worked out, but I thought it was really interesting about the painting that so you said cool. this painting and it's like, do you send a true portrait of yourself okay, so or like a pretty one? This is the medieval version, Renaissance version of online dating. Mm. They're looking at pictures. They're shopping. Like that like that app where you look at a photo and you like and you swipe, swipe it. What is that? I is that, um, I don't know. I think it's tender. Really tender. I think Ten it's really tender. superficial personally. Like because you, sometimes you, you need know, more than just the looks to like really get to know somebody. I agree. I think someone looks prettier or uglier after you get to know them. Okay, so real quick, um, a quick courtship modern day for me, courtship story for online dating. So I've tried it because it's difficult to meet people when you work with ancient objects all the time and, and it's just me and Karen. Yeah, there's so. not a lot of <laughs> men around. Anyway, so I tried the online dating, which was interesting to say the least, and um, the pictures, it's really difficult. I found it really difficult to trust any of it because much like a painting, I'm sure back then, um, the, the pictures, you know, you can put any picture you want up there. And you want to show your best side. You do. So yeah. every, almost every single time I would meet someone, the picture was so much better than in real life, right? Cause, and, and it's okay. Like I don't, I don't like the way I look in pictures a lot of the time and, but, you know, you can kind of, it's me. I look, I look the same or whatever. But yeah. these guys were like, I'm going to post a picture of 20 pounds ago and 50 years ago, and she'll never know. And I would sure. get there thinking that the man is, I don't know, in his 40s or whatever, and he's in his 60s. And I am not kidding you. Like, it was like, like I wouldn't find out or something. Well, you always buff up your resume for a job interview, right? You might maybe. But you're going to find out. Yeah, well, but not for, blame me for job interviews. Oh, you, yeah, you, but you pad the truth. You know, you, you say what the truth is and maybe be like, oh, I, you, you know, I did it up a little You bit. fluff it. I mean, it's, yeah. you're not lying. It's the things that you did, but you do the same thing with dating. And sometimes those little fluffings actually are okay. way out of control from what I understand. Same. I've never online dated, but like the friends of mine that have, yeah. like they have horror stories. Oh, it's horrible. Oh my God. It is horrible. I cannot do it anymore. It's horrible. It's not for me. Some people it might work. I don't know, but it didn't work for me because of all the my paintings that I was looking at were all yeah. off. They were off. My courting ritual was not a good one. That was not yeah. a good one for me. Yeah. Unlike all the other Europeans though. I mean like if you look at um, 19th century Austria. Oh my god. The women. That's disgusting. You know what? Before we get started, let me just let me just take some apples. 
and uh, and because I'm what Michael, if you, what if you, I'm you, what if you, what if you do that, and then we'll talk about another story. And my next and then, date, yeah. So, so this is actually. I don't think I want to. I, I dare you. Okay. 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 So ah. we're actually going to talk about what she's doing right there in a minute. That's cold. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I bet so it is. So I have taken some apple slices, red delicious, and um, put put one of them under my armpit. Yep. That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in, in, in um, women have a lot of interest. It's not just men who court, mm-hmm. right? It's women too. And for example, in um, Finland mm. in the 19th century, the 19th century was chock full of so many interesting rituals for courtship. It really was. Um, yeah, I, and I wonder if part of that, and I, I could be wrong, but I would argue that um, in the past, a lot of marriages, you know, were one of the parents being involved. Mm-hmm. It's like a contract, like who's going to bring land, who's going to bring money. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you have things called dowries. Um, and I know there's like a bride price. There's a lot of different things kind of like that. But it's it's really like the parents are helping you to decide what you're going to do, who you're going to marry, and, and all that right. good stuff. But I feel like later on when people are able to make some of those choices on their own, and I mm. think there was people were making those choices on their own, right. but marriage was more one of, you know, convenience as opposed to always of love. Mm. And I think that later on there's ones of love and some of the rituals are really interesting because you want to show and express those feelings for people um, in different ways to say, yes, I'm interested. And you were the finished one. Is that right. the one with the spoons? No, no, no. That was, um, that was the whittling spoons. That was somewhere else. But in this, in Finland, the women, the fathers would actually take an empty, knife sheath oh, yes, and funny. they would tie it to their daughter's girdles like a little belt and then they would walk around town or go to a party um and then the men seeing the empty sheath would if they were interested in the lady they would take their knives that would fit into the sheath oh my god i can't believe i'm saying this and they would put it in to the, they would go up to the girl and put it, their knife into her sheath and that would imply that he was interested and if the lady was also interested she would keep it and they yeah. would then start the process of courting and, and and you know hopefully getting married if she was not interested she would take the knife out and like give it back to him and then they would be you know sometimes he would be upset I don't know but um yeah the, <laughs> the knife and this apple is really cold <laughs> <laughs> That brings me to another one. <laughs> oh, I think the knife sheath is, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, I mean, it reminds me of like in the past, remember, like in colleges, you would give someone your pin and that would show that you were like yes. boyfriend, girlfriend, and you'd like have this pin. Or like the letterman's jacket. Yeah, or the, le- I actually, I actually had a boyfriend gave me his jacket Aww. in high school. In the 50s? And he like, was, how old are you? No, it wasn't in the 50s. He was bigger than me and so I was like swimming in his jacket I remember oh. that and um then he ended up giving me his ring and he had like huge fingers so I had to like wear it on a, a chain um I remember wearing that like pretty much like every day and so that it was instead of the jacket because the jacket was too big oh, yeah. and also I grew up in Texas and it was hot and jackets aren't always that great but I thought that was really that was kind of interesting well it is and it's all about and you giving. still do that I assume I mean I wasn't well I'm in not- high school that long ago I'm not sure, but um, but the process of giving somebody something mm-hmm. as a token of their love is, you know, is through the ages and up mm-hmm. until modern times. Like oh, this apple, for so example, like if I was about to go to a ball, mm-hmm. a party nowadays. Something with dancing. A dancing gala, perhaps, which I have coming up in March. Oh, I can do this at the gala in March. <laughs> Watch out. That's going to be fun. So anyway, um, 19th century Austrian women would take apple slices and they would put one under their arms while they were dancing. And they would get all nice and sweaty and warm. And then when once throughout the night, at the end of the night, when they see a man that they're interested in, 
Hopefully one that they've been dancing with the whole night. Hopefully. But sometimes not. You never know. Like you're dancing with the guy that you feel necessary to dance with and you're looking at someone else. You never know. That's true. And then they would take, this is so gross. Okay. They would take the apple. I'm taking the apple out right now. You take the apple out and it's all warm and sweaty. So it has her scent on it. Right. Mm. And they would give it to the man that they're interested in. And if he was also interested, he would take it and he would eat it. Don't want to waste food. Oh, sure. <laughs> Why not? And then they would prance off into the okay. sunset. If this was me, and if I needed to do this, <laughs> you know what? I would actually wear some kind of spice, um, like cinnamon, so that I had a scented wow. cinnamony flavor yes. to my apple, so that when it was smelled, it didn't have like VO smell. It smelled mm-hmm. like cinnamon and flowers or something like that, just to ensure that my this- apple was eaten. This is very interesting that you bring this up right now. Do some of the people do that? <laughs> well, okay, so there is this thing. Okay, so you know how, like, the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians, they used to make perfumes, love perfumes, from mm. some of their bodily fluids, okay, male or female. They would call it love potions. They would also make it from the um, ticks. And stingray bile, I know, it's really gross. And um, anyway, they would use it to put directly onto certain areas of a man in order to entice their love and affection for that woman, right? Okay, but they also, there are also some cultures who, as part of the courtship process, would make perfumes that smell like the woman's certain areas and and they would put it on their behind their ears on their pulse points and things like that and then when they were dancing with the man or just around the man the man would smell it like pheromones and stuff like that i mean i mean i i actually think that kind of makes sense right I mean, if you think about it it I does mean, you you need to be able to like the smell you do. of the person that you're with you because do. you can't it's very important i've actually been around people and i can't stand their smell and yeah. i just i'm like i actually I'm like oh I it's like those you. magnets that are opposite yeah. attracting magnets i'm instantly pushed away if i can't Tolerate the smell of another man, of a man. Well, well a man yeah. or a female. I've, I've had right. some, some, some people that I knew that I'm just like, I just don't like your smell. And it's not that it's like mm-hmm. there's a B.O. smell. It's just their natural scent for right. whatever. Just, I smell it. And I'm like, and I'm good. Why don't you sit over there? I'll sit over here so that I don't smell you. And, yeah. and I don't, I don't know what that is. Well, I think that it's very common, and I, I think it, I think the pheromones, like you're talking about, like it has something to do it's something with, with triggering, right? Triggering something. So, so. Humans are very um, sense oriented, mm-hmm. right? So se- smells trigger memories, se- music triggers memories. You know, it's true. So um, I actually heard about this one woman in you know modern day times now, who was wanted to try if she could get more dates. This is actually from an article in Cosmo. She wanted to try and see if she could get more dates by taking some of her fluids. And creating a perfume with them and walking around, going out on dates or just going wherever and, and seeing how the men would react. Hmm. So going back to what you said about cinnamon and all that, she um, went to a perfumist. or I don't know if that's what they're Perfumery. really called. Perfumery. I don't know. And this lady who mixed up scents and made perfumes. And she took her fluids and had to mix it up with some other scents that men found more attractive. And I think vanilla is one of them. They found right? cinnamon, yeah. um, pumpkin pie, donuts. I mean, come on, guys, really. And, and um, lavender. And those are the main scents that men, from, this is from a study that the Smell and Taste Treatment and Research Foundation in Chicago actually did to see what would increase blood flow in men to certain areas of their body. And those were the scents that increased that blood flow. So she put some of those into her fluids and created this perfume. And she actually went out and she, and she said men were much more intrigued by her and that she got a good response, like a better response than usual. And I, so I did some digging to see if they sold stuff online and they actually have, I just saw the name for this perfume. I found it on Amazon, if anyone's interested. It's called Volva. The original (laughs) 
cents. I'm going to show a close-up of it. Yep. It's only like $36. Do you add your own well, smells? Well, it's the eroticizing, oh my god, I can't even say it, vaginal smell of a desirable woman. It's already in so, there. But wait, why would you want to put on those smells of another woman? Then they're not really attractive. Well, they have one for men, so it, it's you'll never sexes. know. You'll never know if they really want you or they want the woman in a bottle. Well, the woman in a bottle. <laughs> they they have it for both sexes, so they also have a man smell that you can that you can wear. That'll I don't know. It's 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 a whole other segment, I think. But it's just interesting that that has become today, or it has it has continued to be today, such an important part of courtship. Smell is important. It is. If you can't smell the stand the smell of somebody right. you can't be married to them and be with them yep oh wait i can't remember okay <laughs> so this one this one this is a victorian yes um dating ritual with the fan mm -hmm. and the left cheek i believe means that you are not interested uh, that is correct and the slow means i'm i'm busy i'm with someone else Mm -hmm. um, this means I'm interested. <laughs> I'm looking, um, maybe possibly desperate um, or hot, you know. And this means, oh my god, like let's totally date. I'm, I'm so, interested. so interested. I'm so interested. Ah! And then if I do this at the same time, I am very willing interested. to date you, and I'm interested. <laughs> but can I just say, I would, I personally, Victorian women were amazing. I personally would go like this because I'm hot. Yes. And there's no air conditioning. Well, you would give the wrong impression. I would give the wrong impression because I'd be like, yeah. And your husband would be very angry. He would be. <laughs> well, yeah. um, this has been a very, very yeah. interesting discussion about courtship. Yeah, and we actually have a lot more that we can We, we might can have talk to separate about. this into another segment. I think we're going to need a part two. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Fortunately, we, should, we should do that. It, well, it's already going to be part of our wedding series. Yeah. There's so much to discuss about weddings. Weddings are bizarre rituals. So I, I would actually argue that the courtship is probably a lot more bizarre than the wedding. And it's not even bizarre. There's a lot of these cultural norms mm -hmm. that they, they came about for a reason. And they mm -hmm. might seem bizarre to someone who's not in that culture, mm -hmm. but they actually make sense when you really look at why it came about and why it's happening. There's a lot of superstition involved in a lot of the aspects of a wedding. The, yes. Which I is. found really interesting and I cannot wait to talk about. So... Well, we'll save it for another time. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to save this one. We're going to do a courtship part two. Yes, I like that. Me too. So, thank you so much for joining us. Um, don't forget, subscribe on our YouTube channel. We need to reach 100 followers. That's our goal. That's our short-term goal. Follow us on all social media platforms, um, specifically Instagram, at Muse Stories. Mm -hmm. And um, our website, MuseCuratorial.com. Yeah. Check us out. And also, um, you know, you can always shoot us a, a, an email through our website and kind of just... Um, Talk to us about maybe some show ideas, some things that you'd like us to kind of look into or research, um, and hopefully we can we can share those stories with you. Yeah. Remember, everything around us has a really unusual history. You just have to look hard enough. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.